everyone. All right, welcome to my back to my channel. Right now, I've got a guest for you guys. His name is uh, Fernando Raul, and he's in Puerto Rico. And uh, we've been buddies for a while, you know, with on social media and, and on Facebook, and and yeah, we're we're talking and stuff. And it's really just a fun thing about this this new world to be able to go on YouTube and just talk to people in other parts of the world about astrology who are doing the same thing as you because you all know how it is us astrologers are kind of weird we're, we like to hide out and study it's a astrology is an eighth house affair it's a it's more of a hidden thing and it's not something that's easy to share with the world I think that's a big part of why YouTube has, has gotten big with astrology you know um, having this oral dialogue being able to take place that we maybe didn't get for some time. And, you know, the oral tradition was such a big part of Jyotish. So I've got Fernando on my channel today. Welcome him. Thanks, Corey, for bringing me here. A pleasure to see you finally in your channel. Yes. All right. Hello and to all your viewers, too, by the way. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Jaimini today. And um, the Jaimini systems, the systems plural uh, of Jaimini, because there's a few different ways that uh, approaches of the Jaimini sutras that you viewers may have found out about. And when you, you know, when you study and research Jaimini astrology, like Googling it, you'll find a lot of different crazy stuff out there, you know, and uh we're going to talk about there's there's at least three well-known kind of systems of interpreting these sutras and there's the mark boney k and rao kind of system and uh this guy mark boney learned from k and rao and everyone knows who k and rao is if you don't k dot n dot rao you can do some googling but he's a very very well-known vedic astrologer from india and uh and then there's the system of, of sanjay roth the system that he has taught and then there's like you know ernst has this been this wild card over here just kind of doing his own thing and has and has translated the sutras himself and found what he has found to work. Now I'm going to be honest. I um, I've only in depthly studied the Ernst system because uh, I found it working so well that and none of the others made any sense. I just I just kind of went into that. But but Fernando has studied the Mark Boney and the Ernst system as well. So we were going to talk about that and just kind of discuss some pros and cons of the different systems. Sound oh. good? Yeah, yeah, it sounds good. I mean, what I want to discuss primarily is like one of the biggest uh, debates in Jaimini. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, let's discuss what Jaimini is. You know, it, it, we're talking about Jaimini Upadesha Sutras. You know, Jaimini was a, nobody really knows who Jaimini was. Yeah. Some people say uh, there's another Jaimini and sometimes they confuse him. Mm -hmm. uh, some people say Jaimini was uh, the son of Parashara, but uh, the idea is that that Jaimini Upadesha Sutras basically Upadesha means like coming close to something or coming uh, forth or facing something that comes forth, and sutras are basically these hard to decode um, little passages. I, I compare them sometimes to haikus, but they're just simple uh, mm -hmm. passages in Sanskrit. And <clears throat> the difficulty with, the difficulty with Jaimini is that, uh, and some people know this, this is common knowledge, it's that it's very difficult to translate because the words do not mean what they mean. <laughs> you got to decode the words in numbers. Uh, you sometimes uh, see words that mean something else. Yeah. Sometimes you get words that are numbers that are necess not necessarily the numbers they mean. You got to decode the word in the number system. And it's the idea of, you know, hiding the knowledge yeah. uh, of, of just uh, making it a little bit more difficult for a neophytes to understand it. And for me, uh, the comparison between Jaimini and Parashara is, is very important. I, I see Jaimini as a more of a traditional Vedic astrology, more in the traditional school of thought. Parashara is more, you know, more, I don't want to say in the modern way, but, but it has to do more with psychological things, things that are not really black and white. It's more like gray. While Jaimini, as you know, it's just uh, material things, right? I mean, not material things. What I mean is like concrete things that yeah, happen. Jaimini you know? is the, as black and white as astrology can get. Yeah, Jaimini, yeah. Well, well, Parashara, you know, you kind of get other things, you know. Uh, the aspects is a, great, uh, is a great example of it, you know. Uh, aspects in planets are like, you know, you're shooting something. If, if you miss, you miss. You kind of might have got the gust of wind from the aspect mm -hmm. and you kind of get um, um, affected by it. But with Rashi, Drishti, you get it activated no matter what always. And if there's a planet there, 
obviously he's going to get in the way of that. Yeah. So, yeah, Jaimini, for those who haven't studied it, I believe it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful system of astrology. Uh, when people want concrete things to happen or to know concrete things, uh, you should go there. Uh, it's very traditional and I like that. You don't get all this psychological thing that, that sometimes, you know, uh, Parashara gets. And not necessarily because of Parashara, but because of modern interpretations of Parashara. Right. Uh, yeah, you could say that there's, uh, if you're looking for a black and white, an on or off in, you know, in astrology, the Jamie system does it. And, you know, also uh, to recap what Fernando was saying, you know, this, these sutras, are basically sutras that make no sense like when you if you, if you know astrology you know <laughs> yeah. really well you go and you read jamini sutras and you think you're getting this really like ooh, finally i'm gonna get the good stuff and you'll read just a bunch of just nonsense you'll just like this yeah. makes no sense uh you know gemini rules the opposite of what it should rule or just whatever everything is just nonsense to you and we you know there's different ideas of why that is and um i know at least mainly that ernst's explanation is that you know uh, if we follow there now there's different ideas with yugas and all this but I guess you know Ernst learned Kriya Yoga and this guy Sri Yukteswar was a Kriya Yogi who said that we may not still be in Kali Yuga it actually looks like Kali Yuga ended around 1700 AD and we're slowly entering the Dwapara Yuga you know and he says that the sage Yudhishthira he saw that you know the uh, the, the we were about to fall into a dark age long ago and he sort of just told people that it wasn't so they wouldn't think that you know what i mean and some, yeah, some yeah, the, the holy the holy science right exactly so go and read the holy science and read the chapter in autobiography that explains this it's all very logical you know and it, it really makes a lot of sense it also matches completely perfectly with history you know the renaissance happened at the exact time that you know um basically humans were supposed to slowly start waking up and we're slowly all waking up still so we're not in a golden age yet but we're in getting out of a Kali Yuga, you know, we're, we're leaving the Iron Age and entering the Bronze Age of ele the electrical age. And then we're going to get to the, uh, it's not till we get to the Treta Yuga, the magnetic age that astrology is truly appreciated. So no one's supposed to validate astrology in the world at this age. So don't expect that anytime soon, viewers. Okay, now, uh, now here's, you know, back to Jaimini. So basically a sage might have known this was happening. He might have known that the dark ages were coming and he might have wanted to encapsulate his knowledge in a text that basically was just so crazy that everyone would just leave it alone. Everyone would just be like, well, that's a sage. We'll copy it. We'll leave it alone though. And whereas Parashara, Paladipika, Yavanajataka, Varahamihira's work, Brihat Samhita, all these things have been copied over and over and over by priests. Some of them very corrupt. No one is perfect. And they've added in their little things of what they think should be right or what they saw, but maybe actually threw it off a little bit. You never know, right? And so just like how Christian texts, the Bible has been lost through many of its many copies, a lot of our, you know, Vedic texts are the same way. Not as much. I mean, because Indian culture is all about re repetition and tradition. But still, there have been some... Yeah. If you look at Parashara, there's different versions of Parashara, yeah. different versions of these texts that say different things. And so, so basically, Jaimini Sutras was something that we think was intentionally made to be so crazy that people would just leave it alone until someone intelligent enough could reroute it and refigure out the sutras, right? And, you know, I wanted to add something to that, too. You know, you also get that in Hellenistic texts of astrology. And, you know, thank God we're in the internet today. Thank God we're in a globalized world. We're starting to uh, come together, astrologers from all over the world, you know, uh, not only astrologers, but academics who know like ancient Greek, ancient Latin, who know Sanskrit, yeah, yeah. Uh, who, who are uh, putting up their, uh, their findings and their studies, their translations. And we're slowly but surely uh, building or rebuilding or rediscovering, you know, a real traditional world astrology. And, you know, yeah. I've said this before, you know, uh, we are in, and, you know, I, I haven't said this before. I, I've repeated it, but some people have said it before me that, you know, we're living in a renaissance of astrology because uh, we're finally getting together different schools of astrology from different cultures and bringing them together and seeing that, you know, the differences are not that big. I mean, in terms of Hellenistic astrology and Vedic astrology, mm -hmm. when you study Hellenistic, you say, holy crap, this is what 
what Vedic astrology is like you're it's filling so cool. in the blanks, right? I know, right? It's and really cool. and I mean, I'm I'm starting to use uh, this year. I'm starting to use like uh, some Hellenistic techniques combined with Vedic astrology. Mm -hmm. And man, I mean, the sky is the limit, and you never stop learning. And that's something really wonderful about the discipline. But you yeah. know, coming coming back to Jaimini, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's the thing. As as we've said, a, a Jaimini wrote these sutras which are basically like uh, haikus like riddles yeah. like you have to decipher and there's uh, different ways to decipher it for example the number system that we're not going to get into it but um a, a, the problem with jamini is precisely that as you've said many people have translated and interpreted jamini in different ways and there are different types of uh debates one of them uh, could be the different dashas and how they are used. We're not going to discuss that. That's much more tricky, yeah. Yeah, the Rahu and Ketu usage, that's another thing we're not going to discuss. But I think the most uh, famous, the most popular debate is the Shara Karka scheme. Mm -hmm. You know, for those who don't know, uh, Shara Karka uh, are Sanskrit words. Shara means movable, as in Shara Rashi, you know, movable yes. Rashis. Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. And um, Karka means significator or that that signifies, of course. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about significators that change. And as you might know, and a lot of viewers might know, you know, Shara Karkas are obtained by the degrees and minutes of a planet in a chart. Uh, the most important being, of course, the Atma Karka, mm -hmm. which is uh, the soul planet or the king of the cabinet right mm -hmm. and that's the most important one uh for example i am sun karka i don't know who what's your atma karka mine is jupiter nice nice yeah. so we're coming in together like guru and kshatriya <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And, and and you know and that's how you figure out the chara karkas but there's a problem mm -hmm. and what's that problem that some people say they're eight and some people say they're seven yes. and you know i i wanted to discuss with you uh, where these schemes of seven or eight characters come from and their explanation and to compare them. Because uh, the reason why I wanted to make this video with you is that Ernst has in a way, uh, the, I don't know if he is the originator of this technique. I don't know if other Indians might have done it before him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's the, the first teacher I've heard doing it is that he has actually created a third scheme or he has rediscovered a third scheme, or he has put out a third scheme, yeah. mm -hmm. that he is the inventor, I don't know, that he might have discovered very probably. But you know, usually people are familiar with the two schemes of seven uh, karkas using the, the, the saptagraha, you know, the, the, the seven traditional planets, mm -hmm. uh, the, the ashta, or I mean the eighth uh, chara karkas, which are used with Rahu. And then you get urn system, where he uses seven, but he combines one to signify two characters that we're going to be discussing. So for those yeah. who do not know these juicy news, um, <laughs> uh, you're in for a treat because, you know, Ernst is a fabulous teacher. Yeah. But unfortunately, many people don't know what Ernst teaches because Ernst has not uh, written a lot of books. I, I knew Ernst first through his books, specifically Vault of the Heavens mm -hmm. and Graha Sutras, which is probably like... Graha okay. Sutras is is probably like, without a doubt, top top three top three best Jyotish books out there. No, it really is. It really is. It, it, it is amazing. It is yeah. amazing. It is amazing, and anybody can use them. I mean, anybody can use that book. Either if you use tropical, either if you use uh, sidereal, either if you don't even know anything about astrology. Of course, yeah. uh, there's a problem, and he says set. He has said this in in different interviews that sometimes people don't care about that book and just want to go to his. Muhurta books or to his yoga books or to the both of the hand because people don't like to to study the basics but yeah. graha sutras is the basics no it's you know? yeah yeah and, well, and that's the thing is that you guys like a lot of the people that's the problem where a lot of you people who are who are googling and all this stuff you have to understand that you know if if you really are someone who knows the stuff you don't give it out for free you teach it you pay for it so i've been just paying for these courses for half a decade now or more you know what i mean and and it gets frustrating when people just Google and they're like, no, but Google says this. 
Google's yeah. not the authority of astrology. Yeah. Go to the real yeah. authorities, and yeah. it's not Google. It's not you know what I mean. It's Google's based on popularity and algorithms, and what's popular. Yeah. You know, quality versus quantity, these are two opposite things. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's not going to be till the trade to Yuga that the most popular astrologer really is the best astrologer. Until that Yuga, the best astrologer is not going to be the one who's in the public eye. I'm sorry. And, and you know, a big problem is that Ernst hasn't published uh, the books. Uh, he hasn't published what he teaches in his classes, in his audio classes in his video classes that, you know, anyone can access if they pay through uh, boltoftheheavens.com, if I'm not mistaken, or astrologyvideos.com, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. astrologyvideos.com. And you also have the card system, which is amazing, that I also practice. Yeah. And, um, you know, people should look into that website if they're interested in knowing what Ernst teaches. Yeah, and, and don't I, just assume that you're going to be able to YouTube and Google oh, definitely. astrology education for free, yeah. because, like, would you get, expect that from chemistry or any other... Yeah intricate system would you expect to just become oh, yeah. a full-time chemist from and from and videos? let's be honest <laughs> Corey, how much money have you have you spent oh, on thousands, thousands thousands, thousands of I, dollars I, on my uh the other day yeah. I, I probably spent well over three thousand dollars in a period of about six years yeah yeah that's and that and, yeah, that's, and that's, that's, that's that's how it is man yeah. i mean I mean, yeah, if you're yeah, cheap, this is to, just to do in Puerto Rico, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just, but if it matters to you, you will yeah. make that sacrifice. Of course. And I mean, if you're cheap, man, you are in a difficult situation. I mean, yeah. and, and you know, I, I don't want to sound negative because millionaires are probably the cheapest uh, people in the world. But, but you know, if you want to be cheap and you're going to go through life being that Rajasic Vaishya attitude of, you know, um, you're gonna have difficulties, and I mean, uh, everybody needs to do a living, and and as long as you know consultations, teachings are not exorbitantly expensive, and 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 Ernst isn't. I mean, Ernst oh. is a very uh, logical price, and most astrologers charge very logical prices. You know, you gotta go ahead, and you gotta learn from the people who have been doing this longer than you. Point. Yeah, That's yeah. It. And I, so, I mean, if you're, yeah, if, if the money is an issue, you're not in the right practice because you shouldn't yeah. be about the money. And really, that's what's interesting is astrology is an eighth house career. You know, it's, it's it involves the occult, the eighth house, which, you know, is actually a house that Jaimini himself at one point, he says, if your Amakarak is in the eighth or aspecting, you'll be poor and roving. You'll be suffering. Yeah. Suffering. You know I mean? or, yeah. yeah. You'll have to be, you know, suffering and moving and have instability in your life. And so that's, you know, that's just the way it is. <laughs> because there are a lot of things he teaches that are different. One of them, uh, we're not going to get into different examples, but one of them is uh, this idea of the scheme of Characarcas yes. in, um, in Jaimini. Yes. And the way he, he justifies it, it's amazing because uh, it's right there in the sutras and, and, and you know, I never, I never even saw it, you know. And it was amazing. And you're going to see how. But first, let's talk about the two traditional ways that at least us Westerners mm -hmm. are accustomed to see the Characarka scheme in terms of the seventh and the eighth arrangement and the debate they create. Okay. okay. Uh, first of all, we can go to the text to start off and where this uh, debate comes from. And it basically comes uh, in the first chapter in the first pala in the 10th sutra. If you, you see it? Yes. All right. Yeah. Atmadika Kala Birna. Yeah. So he, he, this is basically the, uh, the, and he says uh, exactly what I'm saying in his courses. Uh, and basically, you know, you get two versions of it because he did a critical edition. For those who don't know what a critical edition is, is that you take all the existing translations of a text and you try to put them together, all the versions, and try to come up with what originally might have said. So I'm just going to read one. Um, pardon my Sanskrit pronunciation, you know, yeah, for, no for us, for us Spanish speaking uh, people, you know, pr pr pronouncing um, <laughs> yeah, you uh, have to do Sanskrit like, is easier. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> yeah, it's easier, but I don't know Sanskrit. But basically what it says is, Atma Dika Kala Divirna Boga Saptanam Ashtanamva. And what it yeah. means is, uh, the Atma is less, uh, I'm sorry, the Atma is less the Rashi, the more numerous in minutes, etc., among the seven or eight. And then there's another sutra that, that, that kind of changes it. 
because there's a, when you see B here, it means that uh, there's an alternate uh, transliteration, but it's more or less the same message. And basically, what 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 that hey, go back go back to that. We we go oh, oh I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry. There um, you go Upadesha Sutras. Here we go. Yeah, leave that up and and keep explaining. So what were you about to say? Or I, I think I know what you're about to say, but oh yeah, def that that here um, par uh, Parasha. Look at me, <laughs> Jamini. What he says is that uh, you know the Atma, which is the Atma Karka that we talked about. You are Jupiter. I am the Sun. And it basically says that uh, from the uppermost planet, the planet that has the most uh, degrees and minutes of arc, remember it's minutes of arc, not minutes of a watch, it's minutes mm -hmm. of an arc in terms yeah. of how you measure the planets. Uh, it's gonna be the Atma and then subsequently he's gonna give sutras where he explains like the Atma Karka, the Batru Karka, eh, eh, the Matri Karka, the, the Putra, the Pitra, uh, the Gnati and the Dara of course. And he says, amongst the seven or eight. And that's the whole idea of the debate. You yeah. know, and a, lot of, and a lot of people don't realize that, that it stems from this uh, sutra. Uh, what the, f what, I'm sorry, I don't want to say uh, bad words. But what, does, what the hell does he mean with the seven or eight? And that's right. what has planted this whole uh, dilemma about uh, the seven or eight Charakarka schemes, right? Yeah. So basically, there is, we know that it's amongst the seven or eight, but there's just this other version which has the extra onion word, which can mean like other or different from. And oh, so, yeah. Yeah. We can read the other one if you want. I'm sorry. Yeah. So it's, well, no, I'm just, yes, yeah, so that's why I was just thinking. So it's like the same thing, but there's another version which says amongst the seven or the different eighth. And then uh, spoiler alert, that basically ends up becoming, <laughs> you want to include the Lagna, actually, for certain ones, not for all of the, so, like, the, yeah. it's really weird where at certain parts of the Jaimini Sutras, there are, there is an eight Karaka scheme for longevity or for different purposes, like, even in the third one or the later chapters and stuff, but, yeah. but then there is just the seven or the different eight, so it is, basically implying that in general, we use these seven karakas, but then there is a different eighth one where the lagna yeah. or also the fact that the, the mother and the pitri karaka can be one. Oh, That's spoiler the, alert. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. Um, but yeah. But see, I, well, I was uh, going to get to that. You were going to get to that. I'm sorry. I blew it. All right, you go. Yeah, you blew it. You but the thing, that. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say that it's seven or eight, right? Yes. So, and, and some people say that it's seven, and other people say, uh-uh, it's eight because the father, you can't have a mother without a father. That's the explanation they give. Right. And, and you know, Ernst has come up with a different system where you have said so. You know, and some people say the eighth is Rahu. Ernst say that the eighth is uh, the Lakna. And we're going to see how this expresses itself. And see, I'm sorry, I, are you going to say something? Well, yes? well, I was going to say that, yeah. And they say the eight, the Rahu thing, but I think that it's very clear that it wouldn't say the different eighth if it was Rahu. Oh, yeah. You know? Like the Lagna makes so much sense as the different eighth. Also, because in Ashtaka Varga, the eight, the, the eight point system, you use your Lagna as one of them. So that's, uh, the Lagna is associated with an eight, you know what I mean, with an eight count versus Rahu. I get that. But then Rahu's not an embodied planet. And then if you're going to use Rahu, then Ketu should also, you know what I mean? So it, right? Yeah. And, and Ernst Wilhelm says that in the courses, yeah. the idea that, for example, Jaimini does not refer to the nodes. I mean, he does refer sometimes to the node, uh, south node as, as Moksha Karka, but he does not refer to, to like Rahu as a Karka. Yes, exactly. So you can't use it as a Karka. Yes. And obviously the Ashtakavarga president, which for me was very smart in his part. And um, you're going to see, you're going to see. Yes. So, but, but, but we're going to go system by system. Keep going. But yeah. we have to realize that this is the sutra that has um, driven different astrologers to interpret it in different ways. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm going to unshare my screen now. All right. So yeah, that's, that's the genesis of the whole debate that concerns <laughs> the characters. And, you know, people who study astrology and start, you know, because, because when you start astrology, you usually, I've, I've never heard of anybody who's gotten into Vedic astrology first through Jaimini and then through Parashara. Usually it's Parashara first. Mm -hmm. And when people hear about Jaimini, they say, oh, it's complicated and, you know, this and that. And, and, and it's not that complicated. You just need to really study the basics 
and it's, get it's so kind of like the simplest thing ever oh, yeah. you have to practice it and like put in a lot of time before it really works and what Definitely. i actually love about those audio courses that even those he doesn't really take you by the hand with it he just shows you and if you're a good astrologer you'll bust your ass and you'll find amazing results from applying it but not like because it's almost too powerful these techniques are too powerful I'm, i don't share them on my youtube channel ever um i'd share them with people privately in tutoring and when i'm doing real readings but i just don't really yeah i just feel like this is like when you get into that jamie stuff like that's very yeah. powerful yeah. astrology that yeah. is yeah. not just for anyone like you said there were certain things put in that book to kind of just make it harder for neophytes you know what i mean and and it makes sense um anyways and and let me tell you it's it's like that i mean for example the predictions with the palas of the signs you know amazing right amazing And, you know, it's not like you're going to get a big fruit. It can be a little fruit, but it's going to be there. And then timing, that's another thing. But, but more or less, you get the window of time. But you're totally right. And, and I mean, the, the, the wonderful thing is that, that you can learn these things today. We have that open information out there. You just got to look for the right people. And you got to be in the right time to learn it. And, you know, this is the sutra that's created this debate because when people get into Vedic astrology, they usually start with um, Parashara. The majority of the books on Vedic astrology do not discuss this. The only book I've seen that really discusses this is one of my teacher's books, uh, Mark Boney's uh, Jai Mini book, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. For people who want to learn uh, the way Kane Rao does it, that we're going to be discussing a little bit now, yeah, yeah. you should look up that book. It's very good. But besides him, there isn't anybody else who has Can you go ahead and tell it. us more about the Mark Boney system? Oh, no. Well, I'm going to start. I'm going to start first with the Sanjay Rath one. Okay, Because right. that's, that's okay. the most crazy one. Right, But, you know, And, and when people start doing Jaimini, they start seeing, oh, wait, people say, salute. I mean, bless you. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, when, when people start with Jaimini, they say, oh, wait, there are different things going on. Some people don't agree with this. And, and you know, people don't know. And, and they kind of, uh, you know, feel insecure going into it. And one of the themes is this Jaimini uh, scheme. So I want to go first through Sanjay Rath's system, mm -hmm. K and Rao systems, and then finally with Ernst systems. All right. So basically today in internet, you're going to see the debate specifically going between the K and Rao system and the Sanjay Rath system. And almost nobody knows about the Ernst uh, Wilhelm system, I can say. So first let's discuss the Sanjay Rath system. I've never taken courses from Sanjay Rath, I've seen his videos. But you know, I have uh, Freedom Tobias uh, call books, mm -hmm. uh, Science of Life 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. And in Science of Life 1, pages 77, 78, he discusses uh, the idea of the eight Charakarka scheme. Mm -hmm. And basically he says that in his tradition, which he calls the Ash Yutananda tradition, which I guess it's probably the Sanjay Rath tradition, he says that you use eight. And you use Rahu as the eighth kark, okay? Yes. And he says that you use Rahu because Rahu relates to the cause of creation, which is desire, right? And it's, it's kind of interesting because, you know, uh, as I can recall, the nodes have no gunas, if I recall correctly. I, I don't know if, if, if I'm wrong, but... You know, Rahu and Ket are not necessarily Rajasic, uh, and they're neither Tamasic nor Sattvic. They're just wild cards in a chart. But uh, they give Rahu a sort of uh, Tamas, I mean, Rajas energy in the sense of being passionate and desire for creation. Uh, the other reason why they give eight Karkas is that they include the Pitri, the Pitri Karka, which is the father Karka, which okay. would be more or less... It could be the sixth or the fifth, depending on what scheme you use, so the Sharakarka scheme. So, you know, and the Sanjay Rath people usually say, um, we have to add an eighth Karka because we have both a mother and a father, a sun and a moon, okay. a woman and a man, right? Okay. Which kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. So the Pitri should be there, but they choose Rahu, which... Uh, as we've seen, Jaimini never refers to it as specifically as a karka. Yeah. So what they do in this school of thought is that <clears throat> they use the eighth 
Shara Karka scheme, look at this, it's very interesting. They use the eight Shara Karka scheme for living things, and they use the seven Shara Karka scheme for non-living things. Hmm, interesting. And, and what they do is they take out the Putra Karka for the non-living things. Okay. Because non-living things are not going to have children. And that's how they, they rationalize it, right? And Sanjay Rath has become famous basically because he pertains to a lineage, right? And people who are into the initiate culture, who are like very Vaishnava culture, mm -hmm. who like this idea that Indian culture ha is in India, and we got to go there and we got to look to where uh, the scheme is, right? Mm -hmm. However, you know, um, many people go there, get, they get initiated, and they feel that that lineage from Sandhya Rath is something legitimate. However, if you read K. N. Rao's books, he, he says uh, emphatically that there is no such thing as an authentic Yotish Parampara in India. And K. N. Rao says that it has to do mainly with the English colonization and how that transmission was altered. I mean, this does not mean that there can't be any traditional lineage in India still. Maybe there's a secret society or something going on. But even in India, there is debate between um, the idea of an authentic Yotish Param Param. And well, that's the remember, thing, like you can go and ask all these people, where is your lineage? Can I please find it? I've got all the money in the world. I'll take the plane tickets. I'll go there. I will do it. I will pay. I will feed them for a year. They'll never tell you. They'll never say it. Yeah. They'll never end up saying it. I've tried. Everyone has. I would love, I would go to India tomorrow. If you tell me where they're at, I will do it. They aren't there. They're not in the public, at least. They're not, it's not yeah. in the public eye. And it, I'm not saying it's not there because even true spiritual masters and gurus have almost all gone underground. And most of the public yeah. gurus in the public eye in India or on YouTube are not as true as you would think. And when you learn to read charts with all the good systems of astrology, you can see that in their charts. It's, un, it's a sad, unfortunate thing, but we're just barely getting out of the star cage. So all these leaders, only a percentage of them are really legit. You know what I mean? And that's that. That's my take, at least. Um, but but yeah, there's not. It's not as easy to find a real lineage as as they would as you might think. So I would agree with K and Rao. Yeah, and and you know there might be a secret society. There might be some secret cabal. You never know. But remember, K and Rao was a bureaucrat, and he traveled the whole of India. And his books are amazing. You and know, he went out of his way to seek out you know <laughs> astrologers everywhere he went. You know, uh, where is I? Well, I can't find the book right now, but I have it over there. The thing is that he has a wonderful book about yogis, destinies, and the wheels. I, I, yeah, I borrowed that one from Ryan last time I was at his house. I'm oh, yes. That. Yeah, it's really it's, cool. it's very nice. And the stories he has, you know, Kane Rao is probably the most famous living astrologer right now. He uh, deserves uh, it. And he's made yeah. a ton of amazing and he's, predictions. Yeah. And he's like 90-something. So, yeah. you know, he's probably like the king of but astrology. it's not even just him. So many of the legit people have said that. Even Mayor Baba has said, like, the spiritual, the all spiritual glory of India has gone underground. He said that yeah. back in the 40s. So even much more now than you would think, you know? And in the books, K. N. Rao traveled the whole of India, and he said there is no authentic Yotish Parampara. And he mainly uh, says that it's due to English colonization. And, you know, it, it, it kind of, it's, but that's, it's bad. unfortunate. They're, yeah, it's, but they, it's, you know, it's, all the, it's yeah, something like sad, the, but yeah, that, that's, that's something true. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the hope lies in the idea that, you know, there are little bits and pieces all over the place and we can reconstruct it, obviously with divine grace and providence. But, you know, the information is out there. Probably the Menerbund, which are the league of men that would, um, initiate people who would uh, regulate the system like uh, Rash Al Ghul in the Batman movie, you know, mm -hmm. that type of, of system is no longer there, but the, the, the knowledge is there and uh, we can reconstruct it. So this and is- Also, it's ah, kind yeah. of like, like what he says in the beginning of the course, he'll explain this, but you know, when Britain came over to, you know, to India, all the firstborn would have been the ones who studied Jyotish, and then they were the ones who were sent off to get good jobs and to change wow. and to make a bunch of money for their family. So the dumber, the less educated of everyone was the one who would go to the grandfather and learn the Jyotish, and it just started to kind of dilute and get weaker. Doesn't mean it's not there, but it's just not, when you read, when, it's just really easy to say you've got a lineage and that none of us can, can know for sure. You know what I mean? So 
always test what you learn and learn, you know, that's how you develop that, that eye of discernment. But okay, so keep going, uh, wrap up with Sanjay Rath here. So is that basically? Yeah, sure. For, for, you know, for those people who want to learn with him, who want to learn his system, go ahead, you know, learn the more, the merrier yeah. and the more information you have to compare it. But that's basically the system he uses. Now, once again, here, the characteristics is that he uses eighth and he uses Rao. Now we see K and Rao systems, All right. which is the system I used before I learned uh, Earth system. Mm -hmm. And basically what K and Rao does is that he uses seven carcass, okay? And you know, you can see his explanation more or less in the Journal of Astrology in a, in a um, essay he named Jamie Nishara Dash as part one. I, I'm not, I, I do not have the, the exact number, mm -hmm. but what he uses is basically the seven uh, Charakarka scheme, which is very simple, one through seven, the seven traditional planets. And he does not use an eighth karka. What he does is that he relates each karka to a house, except the Amatya karka, okay? okay? So he relates the Atma karka to the first, makes sense. Mm -hmm. He relates the Batri karka to the third, makes sense, brothers, the third brother. Yeah. Yeah. Relates the Matri Karka or Matru Karka, I'm sorry, to the fourth mother, fourth, of course. The Putra Karka related to the fifth children, fifth, makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gnati Karka to the sixth. Gotcha. Uh, although it's relatives, you know, the sixth, the idea that relatives can be kind your like enemies. Aunt. Yeah, yeah, aunts, uncle. Well, sixth house is also maternal aunt because your Correct. fourth house, the third from your aunt, would be your mother's sister. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and finally, obviously, the seventh to the Vara. Dara means okay. a wife. Yeah. <laughs> so Perfect. that's how he uses it. However, he does not associate the Amatya Karka to the second. I've seen, I don't remember if, if Mr. Boney did it, but, you know, I, I'm, I don't remember. But, but the Amatya Karka could relate to the second. But what he does is he uses the Amatya Karka as a significant for career. Okay. And in his system of Jaimini prediction, you can use it to predict um, career. And what he does since he doesn't have a Pitri oh, Karka. Oh, wow, well, that explains why so many people that I've tutored or all these people come to me thinking, and how about the Amatya Karka for mm -hmm. career? I'm just yep. like, I've never yep. heard of that. Whatever you want to yeah. do, that's cool. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. And, and, and in, his, in his techniques, he uses the Matru Karka for buying property. Okay. He sometimes uses the battery karka also for artistic uh, endeavors or sports endeavors. So he's using it in a totally different way. Yeah. Really? Okay. Ganati, the Ganati karka, he uses it for um, situations of sickness or, um, hmm. or difficult. And, um, and so yeah, and the others are, are very usual. Putra is for children. But, yes. but is he not using it as much to represent the actual people? Like how in Ernst is saying, like, you know, your Bratu is literally your brother. That's your brother. You know what I mean? Like, yes and no. Because okay. he uses more in terms of, not in the psychological aspect of it, like, but more in the concrete prediction type. Like if you want to know how your brother's going to do, you would still look at that Bratu Karaka? In a way, but it's more about predictions more than anything else. Okay, cool. Um, and what he does also, yeah, that's, that's the reason why they, they say Amadya Karaka is for career. And, you know, K and yeah. Rao uses definite, d different techniques. One is the Amadya Karka for Jaimini. He also uses a technique where he uses Mercury and he uses it as a Lagna from position and then he sees the Nakshatra. And also you kind of get career through the fifth house from Karakamcha. Uh, but, okay. you know, those, those are techniques that have to do with his system. So and what never, he does, yeah, I've never heard of those. So. Yeah, and what, and what he does is that he eliminates the Pitri Karka. And what he says is that you could use the Matru Karka for father, or you could use the BK, Matru Karka, plus the son for the father figure. Or you could use the BK plus Mars for the siblings, which makes sense, right? Because son is, is usually, although yeah. it is the prime Atma Karka, the natural Atma Karka, it kind of represents the father figure in astrology. Oh, yeah, and obviously oh, Mars yeah. is siblings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, so that makes sense. I could see that system giving you some good results. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I used it in sidereal, but with tropical charts, it didn't work that much. <laughs> so, you know, that's something I have to say to people. Sidereal with sidereal and tropic with tropic. <laughs> yeah. uh, don't expect, I, although the simple stuff do, do work, especially Raj, Raj Yoga, predetermination in terms of Tilkona and Kendra. 
a, a, some band relationships. Um, but try not to mix them because they kind of don't yeah, mesh no, I know, that I know way. What you mean. All right, so, so then now tell us about the Ernst system and how was yeah. that? What was surprising yeah. you? What was, in, well, what was interesting about that? Okay, and here's, here's the cool thing. Uh, I used the K and Rob system for a while. After, and then I did the jump to, to tropical, astro tropical Vedic astrology. In, in Spanish, I call it Wilhelm, Wilhelm astrology. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I kind of, I'm trying to do that in Spanish. But uh, <laughs> the thing is that, that um, with Ernst Wait, wait, system, wait, wait, wait. Well, I'm, I feel dumb. I should know this. What would tropical, what is tropical in Espanol? Um, tropical, tropical, tropical. It's the same. Yeah. Okay. All tropical right. sideral. It's the same. You just pronounce it differently. Right, tropical. Right. Imperial, you just say tropical y sidera. That's it. Oh, but, yeah. Whenever I don't know how to do Spanish, I add like e or l or la yeah. before it, and I just change the dialect. And usually you, you can text me, and I'll and I'll say if you have problem, you can text me, and I'll and I'll just talk to the guy. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, but you know, and then you have Ernst system, and as I've said before, I mentioned he does different things in a different way. But Ernst did something that's very interesting. You know. And when I, I learned Jamini with, with Mr. Boney, I realized uh, he told me something that was very important. You know, Mark Boney, uh, when, and for, for those who don't know, he's probably like the most uh, common, the, the most known uh, Western student of Cambridge. He, he told us that he was driven to translate Jamini himself because he couldn't understand it from other translations. And that's what he did. And that's what Ernst did. Yeah. And and that's what you got to do to understand Jamie. And I think that's and, what and I'm not saying I'm going to learn. Yeah. No, but, and I'm not going to yeah. say I'm going to learn the, uh, Sanskrit to, to, to translate Jamie because I don't have the time to do that. You know, uh, it's not as hard as you think. You actually might yeah. find that if you put some time in, like, it's not as hard as you might think. But yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. And I think Jamie wants that person who's going to go deep into Jamie to study, to learn the Sanskrit. Yeah. And I think, and I think if you go through all the audio courses of Ernst, it's probably like a facsimile of doing that. Uh, yeah, but that's, yeah. what, what, that's what Ernst did. And he did it in a way, and that's the important thing about Ernst Wilhelm. He is a great teacher because he hears his heart and he does what his heart tells him to do. Yes. And he doesn't give a shit about anybody else. <laughs> and that's Amen. the great thing about Ernst. And that's the revolutionary aspect of him. And he has done a lot for Vedic astrology. And he's probably like, if K. N. Rao is the, the oldest, most famous astrologer, uh, Ernst is probably the youngest, most famous astrologer right now in the world, in my opinion. Oh, and, yeah. and, you know, uh, the thing with Ernst is that he translated Jaimini and he changed the Charat Karka scheme from these two models that I've just mentioned. But it's so not like what, he made up his own thing. He's just doing... No, like, that's the thing. More specific. That's the yeah. wonderful... Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. what I'm going to say. And this is something that, that I didn't learn through the Kane Rao system and that the Sanjay Rath uh, books from Freedom Tobias called Does Not Teach. Maybe he teaches it mm -hmm. in his private courses. I don't know. But I'm good, just going to share the screen here because what he did, what Ernst did, is that he uses a seven Charakarka scheme and an eighth Charakarka scheme. He uses the eight Charakarka scheme from some techniques that we're not going to discuss. Mm -hmm. And he uses the seven Charakarka techniques for everything else. So you, you really use the seven car, Charakarka uh, uh, scheme for, for almost everything. And what he does is that he uses one Charakarka to represent two things. He does not take out the Petri Karka like in the K and Rao system. And he doesn't include Rahu like in the Sanjay Rath system. Right. What he does is that he uses the Matru Karka to represent the Putra Karka at the same time. Yes. And you might say, what the fuck is that? No, yes. don't worry about it. It's in Jaimini Sutras. And this is the amazing thing. And I'm going to share it right now. All right, sure. So you got to go to, and I haven't written it down here. You got to go to chapter one, Pada one, Shloka. I'm sorry, Sutra 19. So let's go there. Share screen. So Upadesha Sutras. Okay, no dark web things. I'm all, I'm clear. <laughs> no, no dark web things. Okay, no, no, no hentai. Okay, so we're continuing here to 19. So um, here we go. There we go. Can you see it? 
Yes. Okay. Uh, matra saha putra make it, the matra together with the putra as one. So he's literally just saying it. Yeah. And there's another version saying traditionally the matra together with the putra as one. So yeah, it's there. And that's amazing. <laughs> and there. Then, yeah. And let me tell you, when 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 I got kala for the first time, I saw the scheme and I saw the eighth and the seventh, and I said, oh well, well, Ernst is just doing. You know, he's just he's just she just placed a, a part for the seventh scheme and the eighth scheme. And I didn't realize, stupid me, right? I didn't realize that he used the matra and the putra as one. And I thought the PK, the PIK, stupid me, was the putra karka, but it was the Petri karka. Oh and yeah, no, I get that. I, it's easy to get that mixed up, yeah. Yeah, you know, and for a while I was giving the predictions with the, well, the, <laughs> the PIK, the Petra, as a putra and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's silly me. <laughs> but yeah, you have it right there. Matra saha putra meke. He basically says, you know, use the mother and the son as one. All right, so you were saying, yeah, so exactly. The matru and the putra are one. Yeah, you have it right there. Matra saha putra meke. It basically means the matra, mother, together with the putra, son. Yes. And that's the scheme et, uh, that Ernst uses. And there's nothing and then, ambiguous about that saying. No, man. And, that, and that's, that's, and that's, that's the, I can read. That makes man, sense. Yeah. Let me tell you, when I read this sutra, I was blown away because it's right there, man. And there's another version uh, that more or less the same, you know, with, with the different versions, they sometimes don't change a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe for, for Sanskrit scholars, it might make a difference, but uh, it's right there. And, you know, there. I've been using it and it's amazing because now it kind of makes sense, right? And not only that, you know, when you use the eight Shara Karka scheme for the techniques of uh, children and brothers, you know, the idea of how the Lagna is the eighth and how it relates to the change in your chart and how that represents something important in your life. Yeah. Uh, for example, you know, for me, the Lagna changes into the Petri Karka. So that means that my relationship with my father is going to be important in my life. And it is, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, in my family, yeah. you know, my father's family has been very important to me. Mm -hmm. You know, my father yeah. was the main breadwinner in my house. Uh, you know, I have the same name as my father. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my father is Fernando and Fernando the third, you know? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if you, if you want to, uh, if you want to talk about your experience, uh, yeah. how the well, LACNA relates to your chart. No, I, I actually, uh, I'd have to look at my chart real quick. I haven't thought about that in a minute. Oh, no, don't worry about it. It's been it. years okay. since I took this class, but I did all that with my own chart too. You know what I mean? Cool, cool, and, cool, cool. Uh, and so I got to say, it's, it's really cool when, when we can just, like some things, I guess, you might think there's more of a controversy on, but then you just look and you just see the yeah. chart. You know, hey, let, actually, yeah. hey, let me give an example of that. I actually just thought of something else. So. I'm going to unshare my screen, by the way. Okay, it's yeah, okay? Yeah. Or actually, go to the, keep, keep, do you have GPD? Do you have the, blah, go to the very front, the, one of the first sutras where it says, in front are seen the Rashis and at the sides, both. Oh, the, the Drishti part. Yeah, sure. Exactly. So basically, all of the Jaimini sutras is as cryptic as this, but basically, there's this one in the very beginning where he's explaining Rashi aspects. And yeah. The thing is that even the first commentator who ever wrote a commentary on Jaimini says, you know, Rashi aspects must have been known at the time that uh, in oral tradition, because this is just like, you couldn't have known what he meant unless you already knew. There it Rashi. is. Yeah, like this right here. There's no way you could have known what he meant unless you already knew Rashi aspects. You know what I mean? But this first 1-1-2, one -one you know, the very beginning of this, the text, he says, in front are seeing the Rashis and at the side Rashi both. And the seeing is Pashanti, which is a word which, if you study Sanskrit, pasya or pasyadi means seeing, but it actually is a weird, one of these weird roots, which actually comes from the root dersh, which is darsh or drishti or seeing, like it glancing, like where we get the word darshan or drishti or aspecting from. So it's saying like in front are the aspects or the seeing, the sight, like, you know what I mean? The Rashis are seeing each other or aspecting. So it's really cryptic. You would have had to really know your Sanskrit and been a wise, already known what Rashi aspects are. To understand that and so that kind of just shows how cryptic this is and how some of the oral tradition was still carrying this but then not all of it because it's just so complicated or whatever like we've lost a lot of this traditional knowledge so i just remembered that when you were explaining it that was all i just wanted to 
explain that. Sure. And, and and if I'm not mistaken, he says in the course that that's one of the most difficult cryptic passages to translate. Exactly. And so like if but but no one disagrees on that one, actually. Yeah. Like no one disagrees on that. And he's his point is that we must have certainly like, you know, that was a part of the tradition. That's the only reason people aren't in disagreement, because that's really cryptic. And let me tell you, you know, in terms of Rashi Drishtis or aspects of science, mm -hmm. I've seen that there are a lot of people in India who do not use them. I know, and they don't work that well with sidereal, you know? But then when you start using tropical, Rashi aspect works so well, you know what I mean? And for those of you guys who, who you know are are also like curious about this like the Jaimini is a very sign based system right you know it's all solar it's all about signs and sign aspects and the signs are related to the sun because this, if the tropical zodiac is correct the sun's movement is what creates the signs it's not about a constellation and so again the sun is the objective force and so this whole system is solar and rashi and therefore objective it's about on or off and then the parashra system is subjective, like you said, about psychology and feeling, and it's lunar. And that's what's funny is that Parashra system uses nakshatras, which the moon rules, and it uses nakshatra dashas. Jamie does not exactly. use nakshatra dashas. They so use the sign dashas, exactly. Exactly, so yeah. it's very interesting. They're, the systems, when you really study it, and Ernst seems to be the first person to figure this out, it's very clear that the Jamini is exclusively more like on or off predictions, like do you marry, you know what I mean, blah, blah, blah. Then the Parashra is more like, when do you feel good about your marriage? When do you not like it? How do you, all the in-between and all that lunar yeah. stuff. Yeah. So if you want to be, <laughs> if you want to be a direct astrologer, you know, you're going to do this. Bye. <laughs> or if you want to be more of a, which would be more of a male type of mind. If you want to be more, more like uh, psychological, well, you're going to feel this, you're going to feel that. That's going to be more pressure. And the art comes in like mixing them both, right? Exactly. Uh, which, which is what, what the initiate has to do in life, what the magician has to do in life of exactly. combining that male side, that male energy, that solar oomph mm -hmm. with that female energy, that female uh, 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 grace. And you know, become ambiguous in terms yeah. of uh, become. I'm sorry, ambiguous. No, androgynous in that yes. sense of becoming spiritually, you know, balanced between both. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, you got it there. The three different Charakarka schemes: the Sanjay Rath one, the Kane Rao one, and the um, uh, Ernst Wilhelm one. So, what would I recommend to people if you're doing sidereal astrology? Stick to the you know you can, you can you can experiment with 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 the 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 Ernst one but stick to those you know if you if you learn with a teacher do what the teacher tells you always okay the Mark Boney one it seems like the best if you're going to be yeah. Sidereal, yeah. Right? and if you and if you study with Sanjay Rath do whatever he tells you to do when you're tired just move on to another teacher yeah. uh but you know i wouldn't recommend mixing the tropical techniques of Ernst with the sidereal yeah. chart. And I would say you know, that if you're going to go into studying the Jamie system of Ernst, just forget everything like you've ever thought you knew and then just go into it with a blank slate. You'll probably be better off, right? Yeah, um, that, that has been my story in terms of, of watching his videos there. Uh, but but that's the, the good thing about Game Rao. It's that just like Ernst, he just followed his heart and just did his thing. So for everybody who's learning, just follow your heart. Uh, do what you think is right and, you know, practice and be good, help people. And now we've discussed the Shara, Shara Karka scheme that, to my knowledge, nobody has ever really discussed uh, Ernst a Shara scheme in YouTube. So, you know, yeah. I hope people like it. Uh, and, you know, if you have any questions or any comments, just write it down in the comments and, and we'll discuss them. You know, and, and that's, that's about it. I, I don't know what else can I say. And I'm, and I'm sorry about the computer. It fell. I'm, it's fell. I'm sorry. It's set. No worries. I'm, I'm, no, experimenting, I'm, I'm experimenting with a new setup and, you know. Yeah, no, that's good. Well, anyways, yeah. I mean, I think that's, this gives people a good understanding that um, even if they're just Googling a lot of stuff about Jaimini, that they just may not be getting exactly what they need just in the same way that say you're a university professor and you've got an amazing thing and and you're not you know what do you care what the public thinks like if someone really wants to know they're going to go find the experts so go seek out the experts you students and have fun with uh your research <laughs>
All right. Thanks for having me on, or thanks for coming on, rather, to my channel. Take care. See you later. All right. Later, Fernando.